Hi everyone. In this video we're going to look at the local approximation of functions by polynomials and introduce the so-called Taylor polynomial. Are you ready? Let's do it. Most people would agree that when working with functions, the simplest are polynomials because they only require the arithmetic operations of addition, subtraction and multiplication. If only polynomial functions existed, then even children of primary school age would know how to work with all the functions. And then at the beginning of secondary school, they could learn to calculate limits, derivatives and integrals. Just imagine that, being able to do that by the age of 12 would be fantastic. But of course, it isn't that simple. There are other basic functions besides polynomials, trigonometric functions and their inverses, exponential and logarithmic functions, and so on. It's a pity. Or maybe not. Let's see how we can approximate functions like these by polynomials. First, a quick recap of derivatives. If we have a function f that's differentiable at a point x equals a, then the derivative of f measures the slope of the tangent to the graph of f at x equals a. For this tangent to the graph of f where x equals a, we can say that y minus f at a is equal to f prime at a, that's the derivative of f at a, multiplied by x minus a. Or moving f at a to the right hand side, y equals f at a plus f prime at a multiplied by x minus a. So we have a polynomial of degree 1. Now remember that the tangent at x equals a is the best approximation to the function near x equals a. In other words, when f is differentiable at a, the tangent approximates the function very well. This is only true providing we're close to a. If we move further away, then we don't know what will happen. So, for the equation of the tangent, we have a polynomial of degree 1. Let's call it p of x. This polynomial of degree 1 that we've obtained approximates the function near a. It's clear that the images of f and of p of x at a are both f at a. In other words, the images coincide. If we calculate the derivatives of f and of p of x at a, it's easy to see that both of these coincide as well. So, we found a polynomial of degree 1 such that its image and its derivative at x equals a coincide with the image and the derivative of f at a. And this is a good approximation to f near x equals a. What if we now consider the second derivative? Is there a polynomial of degree 2 whose image and first and second derivatives at x equals a match the corresponding ones of f at a? Of course, we're assuming that f is differentiable twice at x equals a. And yes, you can apply these conditions and easily see that this polynomial is unique and the expression for it is p of x equals f at a plus f prime at a times x minus a plus f double prime, the second derivative, at a over 2 times x minus a squared. Now, this polynomial has more in common with f than the one of degree 1. The second derivative gives a better approximation of the function near a. In general, if we consider a natural number n, and if f is differentiable n times at x equals a, then there exists a polynomial of degree n such that the images and the n first derivatives of the function and this polynomial coincide. The polynomial exists it's unique, and its expression is p of x equals f at a plus f prime at a times x minus a plus f double prime at a over factorial 2 times x minus a squared, and so on, 
plus a monomial of degree n minus 1, the n minus 1th derivative of f at a over n minus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n minus 1 plus a monomial of degree n, the nth derivative of f at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. One minor point. We say of degree n, but in truth it's of degree less than or equal to n. This polynomial is a good approximation to f near x equals a, and we call it the Taylor polynomial of degree n of f at x equals a. Now in the particular case of a equals 0, the Taylor polynomial at x equals 0 is called the Maclaren polynomial. For this case, substituting x equals 0 in the Taylor polynomial, we get the expression for the Maclaren polynomial of degree n of f. Let's look at a simple example. So we have the function f of x equals e to the x, and we want to calculate the Maclaren polynomial of degree 3 of f. As you know, we first calculate the Taylor polynomial of degree 3 of f at x equals 0. Next we calculate the derivatives that appear here, up to order 3. Then we write f of x, f prime of x, the second derivative of f of x, and the third derivative of f of x. Since f of x is e to the x, f prime of x, the derivative of e to the x, is also equal to e to the x. In fact, however many times we differentiate e to the x, the result is always the same. So, we also have e to the x for the second and third derivatives. Now we substitute x equals 0 in the image in the derivatives. Putting x equal to 0 in e to the x, we always obtain 1. Finally, we substitute in the expression for the polynomial, and there it is. If we work out the factorials, we'll obtain this polynomial. As we know, this is a polynomial of degree 3, and it's the only one that satisfies the condition that the image and the derivatives up to order 3 of this polynomial and the function at 0 coincide. This polynomial will give us good approximations of f of x close to 0. For instance, since 0.1 is close to 0, in theory we can approximate f at 0.1 by p at 0.1 by substituting in the polynomial the value 0.1. If we do this, we obtain the value 1.1051667. And if we evaluate f at 0.1 using a calculator, that is e raised to the 0.1, the exact result is 1.1051709. As you can see, the approximation is very good. It gives the same value to four decimal places. If we do the same for 0 0.9, which is obviously further away from 0 than 0 0.1 is, then you'd expect the approximation to be worse. If we approximate f at 0 0.9 by p at 0 0.9, substituting 0 0.9 in the polynomial, the result we get is 2.4265. Now the exact value of f at 0 0.9, which is e raised to the 0 0.9, is 2.4596031. So it's still a reasonably good approximation, but it's not as good as at 0 0.1 because we've moved away from the value where we calculated the Taylor polynomial, which is where a equals 0. Finally, something important we need to mention. When we're approaching images, we're not working in an exact way, so it's inevitable that some error is involved as we've already seen. In methods where we approximate, so-called numerical methods, it's always essential to know how good our approach is. In other words, to estimate the error. If we approximate f of x by p of x, then the error is the absolute value, which means it must be positive, of the n plus one-th derivative of f at some value we'll call psi over n plus one factorial 
times x minus a raised to the n plus 1, where xi lies between a, the value where we calculate the Taylor polynomial, and x, which is the value where we approximate. Of course, this xi value isn't precisely known, otherwise we'd know the exact error, and from there we could get the exact value. So xi isn't known, and neither is the error. But what we can do is limit the error, to make the error bound as small as possible. We could figure out the error bound in our example. It isn't hard to do, but it would make our video a little long, so we'll leave that for another day. I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave any comments you have below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, and we'll continue to make the best videos we possibly can for you. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon.